And so um, a lot of you probably have already seen this uh, mind triangle here, this mind diagram. And if not, then it's brand new. But this is a two-dimensional uh, image of to help us understand a little bit and grasp a little bit better um, our mind. You know, we aren't our mind. We aren't, you know, there's a difference. Also, there's a difference between the mind and the brain. The brain is, you know, here in the physical only. <laughs> you know, it's a part of the body. It's, you know, what helps function all of the functions of the, of the body. You know, the mind is different. You know, it's like you have a, a motherboard in a computer. You know, the motherboard in the computer is different from the person moving the mouse. You know, the person moving the mouse is like the mind. It's, you know, it's, I, I enter in the programs on the keyboard. I can program the computer to do what I want it to do. You know, your mind can program your, your brain to do things, you know, but the mind can be programmed. So the consciousness is also, you know, what's even behind all of this. So the consciousness is more your essence, your intel it's, it's your intelligent essence. And it uses the mind as a tool, a tool for experiencing and a tool for understanding who we are. You know, we use the mind to understand who we are. You know, we use, just like we use the physical body to understand who we are, you know, with the, the senses of the physical body are, pretty much all that we have in access to the physical. You know, if we didn't, if we couldn't feel things, if we couldn't see things, if we couldn't smell things or taste things or hear things, we might as well not even be existing <laughs> because we have no way to experience the physical. But anyways, so the, there are three divisions within the mind. There is the superconscious, the subconscious, and the conscious. The conscious mind is what we're most familiar with. That's the mind that the physical body uses here in this third dimension. It is, you know, all the, the conscious mind is very aggressive. It's always there. The thoughts are always there. They're always coming into the forefront. You know, they're pushing their way in there. Now, the subconscious mind, it's, it's mind that the soul uses in the fourth dimension. And the superconscious mind is the mind that the spirit uses in, in the fifth dimension. So the, high, the deeper you go within your mind, the higher the frequencies are in these different realms. And so the higher in consciousness it is. So there are three divisions, one, two, three, and there are seven levels. The physical level, the emotional level, the lower astral level, the upper astral level, the mental level, the causal level, and the cosmic consciousness, Buddha consciousness, Christ consciousness, you know, whatever you want to call it. But it's, you know, it's the highest form of consciousness that the mind has. Beyond that, you have, you know, your real self, which is, you know, a ray of the most highest light, essentially. So uh, within these seven levels, these four right here are the main, within the subconscious mind, are the main ones that you will have dreams with. I mean, you, yeah, you can, you know, dream and actually project into superconscious mind um but it's not you know, most people don't really do that um, sometimes though a person will have that experience but the 99.9 percent .9 of your dreams are going to occur here and for most people 90 90 percent of your dreams are going to occur you know maybe even 99 percent of your dreams are going to occur in between the lower and upper astral how you can tell which level you're dreaming in um is the emotional level, like a lot of people talk about, they have black and white dreams. They only dream in black and white. I've had plenty of people tell me, I only dream in black and white. I had one guy tell me, everybody dreams in black and white, and you fill in the color when you wake up. It's, like, it's a lot of processing on the very instant you wake up, buddy. But no, I've never dreamt in color. <laughs> but, um, you know, whoever, you know, did the research on that, they probably only dreamt from the emotional levels. So they felt everybody dreamt in black and white. But when you're dreaming in black and white, it's uh, emotional, or if, um, you know, uh, like my girlfriend just told me, uh, she woke up from a dream where the picture was in black and white. And so just the symbol alone was in black and white. So that's kind of indicating to you that this has something to do with the emotional level. And so whenever the just black and white shows up, you know, it's about emotion, you know, something going on with your emotions within the emotional level. You know, the emotional level is the first level within the subconscious mind 
because it's adjacent to the physical, you know? So that's why we feel our emotions. That's why we call them feelings because we can feel our emotions just like, you know, my shirt. I can feel my shirt, you know, because it's up against and brushing up against my skin. You know, we can feel that, you know? So, and that's also why when manifesting, a lot of people will tell you how uh, feeling what you're imaging, you know, feeling what you're desiring, what, what does it feel like to have that? is so key because you're bringing the feelings into it because that's the last level that a thought has to go through in order to manifest out here into the physical, you know? So the, the, this line right here delineates that there's a separation, a stronger separation between the super conscious mind and the subconscious and conscious mind than any other separation here. You know, the super conscious mind and the spirit is whole amongst itself. The subconscious mind and the conscious mind are two halves to a whole. They work together, you know? And so I'm, I'm getting back to the whole manifesting thing, but I'm breaking this down first to help you understand what I'm getting at. So the, the physical body and the soul are two halves to a whole. Your physical body is born new every, every lifetime. Your conscious mind is born new every lifetime, but your soul and subconscious mind is very old. Uh, I mean, some people might be relatively new, but I doubt this is a majority of people's first lifetime, <laughs> you know, majority of people here on the planet, it's not your first life. But anyways, you know, some people might not even believe in lifetimes. Anyways, we'll get to, we'll get to that. The subconscious mind is receptive and the conscious mind is aggressive because universal law of duality, everything has two halves to a whole, um, aggressive and receptive, feminine and masculine. So the, the way that they work in manifesting is that you have you have thoughts within the physical conscious mind you know your mind like i said your those thoughts are just coming out your your conscious thoughts whether you're conscious of them or not the co thoughts within your conscious mind are imprinted and planted into the mental level here so it's like as if um you know your mind's like a garden and lao tzu even taught in the garden because he, it helped people to understand their mind. So the mental level here, and, and actually that's why, you know, the sub, whole subconscious mind is, rep, you know, the earth in, in the universal language of mind in dreams is represented, it represents the subconscious mind because this is like earth substance, fertile substance, ready to grow whatever's planted. You know, you can plant a, a sunflower seed in the ground if you you know if you till the ground and prepare it you can plant a sunflower seed it's going to grow you can plant a rose bush it's going to grow you can plant an oak tree it's going to grow you can plant a dandelion it's going to grow you can plant johnson grass it's going to grow you can plant the ugliest plant in the world it's going to grow you know the the earth the earth doesn't care it doesn't discriminate whatever you plant in there it's going to grow so it's very that's why it's very important what you're planting within your mind you know, so if you aren't programming your mind, then whoever else is programming your mind is going to have control over what manifests for you. But anyways, the mental level is where things are planted. And whatever you plant into the here, what is determined by what grows is the quantity and the quality. So if, if I think a thought 10,000 times a day, that thought is going to have precedence over the thought that I think a hundred times a day. You know, so if I think a thought of I need more money 10,000 times a day, that's going to have, you know, the subconscious mind is going to, you know, be like, oh, 10,000 times he wants me to manifest this versus a hundred times of I have more than I need. You know, and unless, unless the thought that I think a hundred times a day of I have more than I need is more clear and more vibrant within my mind, you know, more light because light represents awareness. So, you know, the more aware I have, like if it is a full on image, like fully immersed, I can feel it. I can taste it. I can see it. I can touch it. I can hear it. You know, I can just really resonate with what that means to just have more than I need. Then that hundred times will probably be more powerful than the 10,000 times that it's just like in the back of my mind, I need more money, I need more money. So the density, the, the vibrance of an image, of a thought, because the thought is an image, 
So the vibrance of the image holds just as much weight as the quantity, how many times you think. And that's why visualization is so key. When you sit there and spend, you know, 10 minutes a day, just really formulating the image of what you want, it will help to overpower the, the other thoughts that are there that kind of go against what you're actually, you know, desiring, consciously desiring. You know, it'll help overpower the unconscious thoughts. But anyways, no matter what it is, it'll get planted here in the mental level. And as it gains substance, as it gains substance, it gets more dense. Like, you, like I said, you know, the more dense, the more, the more energy that you feed into that, you know, the, like when you plant a seed, you know, into the ground. And if you never come back and water it, it's never, you know, it's just going to sit there and die. You know, but if you come back and water it, you put it out in the sunlight, you know, you let it get all the nutrients and you feed into it, you know, you're feeding energy into it, then it'll grow. It'll get more dense. It'll sprout and slowly break out the surface and you can then see what is growing from out of the earth that's like a seed being planted down here and then as it gets more energy formed into it it gets more dense and falls down out into the physical until it materializes and the last thing that it goes through is the emotional level and the emotions are what push things out into the physical you know that's why i say all the time emotions are road signs you know, you, and you, so use them like they're uh, road signs, signs on the road to help you know where you're going to be going. And hey, caution, you don't really want to go down this road. It's a one way. Oh, it's one way. I can't, you know, I can't get out. Or I mean, it's a, it's a dead end. Oh, I need to turn around as soon as I can because there's, I can't go anywhere down this. Let me turn around. I wouldn't have known if the sign wasn't there. I would have just went all the way down and found out it was a dead end and stuck. So use it like a road sign. Anytime you have an emotion, that is unproductive, that just means that something that is manifesting down from the mental level and is, is physicalizing, something is materializing or has, ha, is or has manifested that you do not desire. <laughs> and so that's where the uh, negative emotions come from. You know, because um, emotions are just energy and energy is neutral. It's how it's charged. Is That's how we're perceiving it as positive or negative, as productive or unproductive. And anytime you have a good emotion, great emotions because something that you have been desiring is manifesting or has manifested it's being pushed out so that's why emotions are so key you know and there's and there's elements involved to each of these also mental the mental level is air the upper astral level is uh fire you know because like the mental level it's not a thought in the mental level is very wispy so when the thought is first planted if you don't stick with it, you know, it's going to float away. It's like a kite. If you're holding on to a kite. You know, you got you to stick with it. Keep your attention on it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it until it, you know, gets a little more substance. If you let it go, wind's going to blow that thing away. Gone. Never see that kite or balloon again. <laughs> you know, but now as it gets more density, the upper astral level is, it rep is represented by the element of fire. You know, now as, as, it starts to gain roots, it begins to expand. Fire represents expansion. Your idea begins to expand into all of the different thousands of possibilities that it could happen in order to make it manifest. Then the lower astral, the element represented there is water. Okay, water is a little more soluble than fire. We're getting a little more density here. You know, water's a, water's still fluid like fire, but it it doesn't really expand so fast. You know, it doesn't really expand so much gravity has more effect on it than than uh fire you know so it's it's getting more dense it's falling more it's getting gaining more substance you know it, if you throw something into a fire the fire is going to affect the thing you throw in it if you throw you know something into water the water is going to be affected by what you throw in it you know if i throw oil into water if i throw you know salt into water the water is going to be affected by the thing thrown in, you know, there's more, it's, it's less waste, there's more density to it. And then the emotional level is represented by earth, uh, the, is, the, is the element that, that is associated with the emotional level is earth, because it's, it's much more dense, you know, it's has, it's gained a lot more density, and things are ready to physicalize here. You know, I had one dream once, um, a long time ago, where, you know, and these, these things are all throughout the uh, 
you know, plenty of different um, holy scriptures and things. So like I said, we'll get to uh, week three uh, explaining a lot of this. But one time I had this dream kind of help verify all this for me, you know, because metaphysics is is something that, you know, I I can't prove to you anything metaphysical. You know, you have to create an experience for yourself to know whether something's true or not. You know, no one can prove to me. No one has ever been able to prove to me that lucid dreams are real. No one has ever been able to prove to me that astral projection is real. You know, no one has ever been able to prove to me that thought transference is real, you know, but I've been able to prove to myself that lucid dreaming is real. Astral projection is real. Um, energy healing is, is very real. Uh, so you can create your own experiences to find out for yourself. So this is one thing that I experienced that was like verified some of this for me. I woke up and I was like, oh, shoot, all that stuff that I learned it actually is true. I kind of I believed it before, but now I know it's true. So I had a dream where I was on um, on the roof of a skyscraper with my mom, which, you know, skyscraper, roof, and uh, mother all represent super conscious mind right here. <laughs> and uh, my sister was there too. But I ran and dove off the roof. I didn't have no, uh, you know, parachute or anything. It didn't matter to me. <laughs> dove off the roof and I'm falling. And all of a sudden, like I go, you know, fall maybe like three stories down off of this. And then boom, I answer a, a black void which was, you know, this level here, moving from this level into the mental level. And then now I'm still in the sky, you know, I leave the black void and I'm in the sky now and I'm just falling and there's just clouds everywhere. And it's just the sky. I can't see any ground or anything. I'm just falling. That's the air. And then it goes void again. And then I'm back and there's lava and fire and volcanoes erupting on the ground. I'm still way in the sky falling. When I'm falling, there's fire and everything. And and volcanoes and lava all over the place, you know, which is, you know, upper astral, I'm getting lower. And then boom, it goes into a black void. And then boom, I come back. And now the whole, it's like water, the movie water world. It's just one large planet of, of all, everything's water. Like I'm over top of the Pacific ocean. There's just water everywhere. And then boom, enter the black void again. And then boom, come back and I'm over top of the forest and then fall all the way down. And then I wake up. And so, you know, I went through all, I was all the way up here in a dream. And within, you know, five minutes, I'm back to my body. I went through the mental level, the air, the upper astral level, the fire, the lower astral level, the water, the emotional level, the physical, and then boom, back to my body. And that's why a lot of people, like when I was a kid, people would say, oh, if you, you know, when you're falling in a dream, you wake up before you hit the ground. Because if you hit, actually hit the ground, you die. <laughs> and that's what kids told me. <laughs> like all my siblings. My oldest sister is the one who told me that. She said it like it was absolute fact. Like it was two plus two is four. You know that, right? <laughs> like that's how she told it to me. And so it was, it was wild. And I, I was like, man, really? But now I understand, you know, it's just that you're falling through the levels of consciousness. So once you hit the ground right here, the next place to go to is your physical body. That's why you wake up <laughs> because you've come back to your physical body. So it's very simple. But Anyways, that is what um, kind of a, a little more in depth into these four here. A lot. Another thing uh, to point out with um, this this mind triangle here is that in between the upper and lower astral is where the akashic records are located. So a lot of a lot of people have heard of that. Some people haven't heard of it at, at all. Akasha. The word akasha means the all. So the Akashic Records is the records of everything that's ever vibrated and vibrated. So you can go there and, you know, verify different information for yourself. You know, it's like a library. Um, you know, you can go there and, you know, check out some books. <laughs> but, um, you know, go out and check out the books on your life and lifetimes. Uh, but anyways, this is kind of more, in any, anybody have any questions or anything over any of this that I've gone over? No? All right. All right. Great means I must have explained it pretty well or I've explained it so terribly that a question can't even begin to formulate